thank you everybody for joining me. I've been going through my orchids and I have been looking and seeing why do I consider some good? Why do I have my preferences? What makes one of my orchids a favorite? And yeah, I could go for 15 or 20 points, but then, you know, we'll be here all day. Who wants that? <laughs> but uh, no, let's go with the first one. And this is in no particular order. It's just a list that I made up, things that I've recognized as to why some of my orchids actually fall in my favorites list. So here goes. A favorite of my attribute is orchids that debunk the stereotype of orchids are slow growing. Well, I'm going to have to step back because you can see the genus here, Catacetinae, actually all mine are Catacetums, but in general the genus Catacetinae are among the favorite because they debunk completely this notion that orchids grow slowly. And my three that have managed to stick around with me are Jack of Diamonds, right here. Once they get going, they're not slow. This is my Fred Clarkyara Black Pearl. Enormous, <laughs> not slow at all. Massive bulb in the back. And here is my Jumbo Mickey, also with three bulbs. And there is nothing slow about these guys once they start growing. And I love those attributes in an orchid that can break the rules and you can't just throw everything in a pot about orchids growing slowly. And not only the catacetinae, there's also the pendant dendrobiums, the winter resters. There are some species out there that are not slow growing at all. And I like having those in my collection because it is a joy to watch how new growths develop. I think it's absolutely marvelous. Also debunking the notion that orchids are slow. This is growth from four months since the new growths develop. And there is nothing slow about the Aphyllum or Synonym periardii growths at all. And there are other species around that are also just as fast, like with the Anosmum and something, and along those lines. Mine is a baby. I can't use that as an example, but once it gets mature enough and gets going, it definitely falls into the category of debunking that orchids are slow growers. So this is now almost, one of the longest canes is almost a meter long. So there's nothing slow about that in a time frame of four months. Believe it or not, many, many times, size is an attribute that I also look for and makes orchids my favorite because they will fit anywhere where there's not space for the others. So Tolumnias fit into that category perfectly and I am filming against the light. I hope that you can see them. You see, I would have difficulty fitting an orchid's shelf in here without blocking everything. But my Tolumnias hang in little baskets and they can fit into that little cranny and I can actually enjoy more of them. Perfect little size companions. My Rapiculus Lelias. There's 10 of them down here. Under a shelf, taking up no extra space at all and fit perfectly into the gaps that other pots leave in the winter when there's time for some of them to come in. So yeah, size is an attribute and size matters. Another favorite, can't look past the leaves of some of the orchids. Some of the Paphiopedalums have incredible leaves. They're also a little bit feel like serrated on the surface. When the orchid is not in bloom, having some interesting leaves to look at before she blooms again 
certainly is a fantastic, fantastic attribute. One I look for and I have to restrain myself when buying something new because leaves are something that I go, oh, shiny and beautiful, mottled, must have, makes them a favorite. Speaking of leaves, this is interesting as well and makes it a favorite. Tourette and semi tourette orchid leaves. They are definitely something that catch my eye, my imagination, and my want for them. Most of them are hot growers, so for the time being, I'm keeping my collection very limited until I get them right. But my Paraphalonopsis labucensis here, still a baby, will one day have, hopefully, meter-long leaves, pendant, growing like the Zydenfadenia mitrata. Hopefully one day this pot is just going to look like a ponytail. That's the plan anyway. But it's these kinds of leaves that also attract my attention and I want them in my collection. Growth habit. Another attribute where I'm going, yes, must have, because you grow upright, you grow strong, you don't need much training. You just do you and it's gorgeous. The Brassavola digbiana being a classic example of a growth habit that I absolutely adore. I favor that growth habit. The Lelia purpurata, same thing. So I do take growth habit as a very, very favorable attribute and something that makes an orchid a very, very quick favorite. Names. Aha. What's in a name? An entire family. And that is another thing that shoots and propels an orchid into my favorite category. So, and Grecombossary is because my family name is in here. Take away the RI. This orchid is a favorite of mine. Speaking of names, my family is represented here. Unfortunately, I do not have a Dendrobium alexandre species, but this is a cross with Polysema. Still, it holds my daughter's name. My favorite as well in, with regards to attributes, Catlia Maxima. I will not be without it and my golf green hair pig. These two belong together. This is because of my son, and this is because of his profession. Golf green bought because of the name. Yes, the beautiful blooms are a bonus on all these orchids, but it is the name that pushes them to the forefront of being favorites and must-haves Keikis, keikis, an orchid that provides keikis. I love it, my Dendrobium tortilla every year, two keikis. But the positive of the ones that I'm talking about that propel them up in the rankings of favorites is they do it after the orchid has bloomed. And that makes it a favorite of mine as well because we have some candidates, like the nobly here, that if we don't get it 100% right, the nubbins turn into keikis and we don't get any blooms. So it is the tortilli and other candidates like the aphyllum here, two more keikis on the go. I love and make these very quickly my favorite orchids because they do it after blooming and then we can share. And I think that is a wonderful attribute. Bloom first, keikis after. You're right up there as categorized as a favorite. Still on the keiki theme, but segueing into bloom count. Hibiki and berryoda. Both keikis for sharing, 
and the berry odor has the beautiful quality of doing it after blooming, whereas the hibiki doesn't mind to be mid-bloom and growing keikis at the same time. So either way, moving on, bloom count and longevity has got to be another attribute that just propels an orchid into favorite stardom, I would say. And this is true in this example for the hibiki. These blooms can last up to five months, and that is not just one cluster after the other, they're all here at once. And despite no fragrance, you want to bloom that long? Be my guest. You are a favorite. The berry odor, bloom count as well. Fantastic. And they all come out successively. A lot of spikes will grow and then the blooms will bloom. Even though the blooms themselves might only last 10 days, depending on temperature, the abundance of blooms will give a blooming of about two months, at least two months, and with a fragrance of very, very heavy, very, very heavy like um, syrup, honey. What's not to like? Definitely an attribute that propels an orchid into favorite category. Memories. According to memories, some orchids in my collection trigger awesome memories. And Grecoids, for example. Personally, I've never been to Madagascar, but I have lived in a climate where they were just growing on the trees. Privately owned properties, never been that deep into a jungle to see them in the wild. But 50, 60 year old Angrecoids in the trees. Those are the memories I have when I see mine, and that makes them a favorite as well. So I look for memories when I look to purchase a new orchid. Very important. I have seen roots on some of these out there as thick as a wrist. Unbelievable. And those are the memories that I cherish, and then I have my orchids, and they trigger them, and that makes them favorite. Time of year. Time of year for blooms. The early bloomers that bring in the growing season. Pulmonara Masai Red is one of those that propels it into being a very favorite one of mine. This one actually comprises two categories because it has the name Masai in it, but it also fits the category of time of year that it blooms. And it pushes out and gets active as one of the first ones to push spikes from coming out of the winter, late winter, early spring. And it's just one of those aha moments and it makes you feel good and spring is around the corner. Pulmonara Masai Red, definitely a favorite. That includes the Maxillaria variabilis fits into two of my categories. One is the name, Maxi Laria. And the fact that it is a spring bloomer and it comes with the pop of yellow buds mid-February. And it looks like you've just come out of New Year's. You remember the fireworks and then you see the little pops of yellow and then this whole spray here of the leaves. It's one of those things that you want to see when you have just come out of winter fits the category together with the Colmenara. Ringing in the spring, Maxillaria variabilis, AKA Cousin It, a showstopper when it comes time for him to bloom. I love it. Fragrance. Anything that is fragrant, and I'm not talking Bulbophyllum, I like nice fragrances. Port wine fragrances. My Cattleya Zagari Wax African Beauty is showing signs of saying goodbye for now. Hope to see you soon. But fragrance will propel an orchid up to my top favorites as well. Without fragrance, you gotta have something else going for you. 
has to be possibly a name or a memory or bloom count. But if you have a fragrance, you are right up there in the list of my favorites. My Pro Catavola gets to the next attribute that makes an orchid a favorite, and that is bigger. Bigger in the growth habit, bigger in how it blooms. Every growth is producing a spike. It has more attributes than one going for it, but when it comes to bigger, I must say, the Pro Catavola Golden Peacock is the example of what I look for in an orchid and then, if it behaves accordingly, quickly propels it to one of my favorites. I, I love orchids that have a vigorous growing habit and then back it up by blooms. There's another attribute I would like to point out and that is environment, climate. If there are so many orchids on the attributes list that propel them to favorites, there are also many that I don't have and they are my favorites. But my climate is not conducive, I believe. And then, you look at this, my Victoria Regina. This being a cool to cold grower, is doing absolutely fabulously in my environment here. It has grown exponentially throughout the hottest months of the year, July and August. I would never ever have believed it, ever. And I am so pleased. And how can this not become a definite favorite? when the attributes that it has are not conducive to the environment. Definitely, definitely one of my favorites because of what it's doing against all odds. So I've just kind of narrowed it down. What makes an orchid a favorite? certain qualities, certain attributes, definitely have made some of my orchids must-haves. I won't be without them, but that's only a few. I just wanted to put them into perspective because, oh, this is my favorite, and yes, this is my favorite. Oh, and I love this orchid. And just give some reasons behind why I say what I say and how I qualify what makes an orchid a favorite. Doesn't disqualify any of my other collection, but it certainly elevates some above others. Now, if Gyrac Horn is going to do this every year and grow a bit more stronger and not so puny, this will become a top favorite as well. <laughs> okay, so now that you know my favorite categories, what do I look for? What do I enjoy in an orchid? How about you tell me what comparisons you make in your collection and what propels an orchid into favorite or less favorite? I mean, it always changes then, doesn't it? It can always change depending on what the next one does. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope that you have a wonderful day. Take care. Remember to please stay safe and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.